I contacted Joey at Joe Mac, and of course he normally does the uh, monitor chassis, but he does get involved with uh, with game boards as well. Of course. And interestingly enough, yeah, he found straight away the problem with the sink. So let's go through the things that he found and what he fixed up. Now, if you remember, the board set is structured into two, two layers. The bottom layer is where all the main logic for the, the game is and, and I guess the memory for that. The top board layer is uh, predominantly for the sound. Um, so he found on the bottom board, the chip here, uh, next to where it says seven and that was faulty and that was the main one responsible for the sink so he swapped that out but he also found another one over here on the left hand side uh, on the main board and that was also faulty so that was also changed I'm not sure if that was directly related to the sink as well or, or potentially another issue uh, but those two had to be changed then we had multiple problems on the soundboard and if you remember the sound really was just giving us a, um, a sort of a hum and, and nothing nothing else really so there was definitely issues on there as well as the sink. And sure enough this big chip here on the left hand side of the soundboard uh, needed to be completely swapped out. Then on the middle here there was a crystal, um, timing crystal which was completely missing. So that definitely wouldn't have helped uh, in terms of uh, sound generation, I'm sure. So that crystal uh, he found off another board, I believe, and uh, managed to swap that in. Then we had this little chip just over to the right of that was also damaged and needed to be replaced. Uh, and the one directly under it was also needing to be replaced. And then the big one to the right hand side of that was gone and then the little one next to that. So it seemed like that whole area, you know, maybe that got zapped. Um, was that a problem before or after? I mean, we weren't getting any sound even when we first fired this game up originally. So, you know, maybe it's had some problems in the past, a power surge or something. But again, the wiring in this cabinet is so poor as we've settled along, uh, it's sure to have probably caused some issues along the way. And then to top it off, he finished off with the um, installing the battery. Again, top marks to Joey for doing that. And as you can see, guys, look at look at the number of chips. You know, I think there was what seven seven odd chips there, and the the crystal as well as the battery. I mean, that would have taken me a long time. I probably you know, well, it would have taken me ages to trace those those issues. Um, you know, especially with my my low skill level at at. Um, down at the schematic side of things. So that was a relief. So we have a working board set. So now, guys, we have to turn our attention back to the cabinet and the problem that we had before we uh, started looking at the board again, which was, of course, something going on with the power. So let's get in behind the cabinet here and let's check that out. Look in the back here, we can see that we have the uh, switching power supply here, which is providing DC voltages out through to the jammer harness sorry not the jammer harness out through to the konami harness currently and we've got a number of different colored wires here we've got uh, red for 5 volts blue for 12 volts and black for earth also have a brown and a white one here i gather maybe one of these is a minus 5 volts I'm sure what the other one is but they are not hooked up at all and we've got a couple of transformers i'm not sure we've got two transformers down here um, one on the left is uh, servicing the monitor and I'm not sure why we have this guy here I was trying to follow the cabling because we've also got the cabling going up to the marquee which is usually about 100 volts and looking on the markings up here I think that's this one up here says 125 on there I think and way up under there on that ballast if it's a ballast has also got uh, I think 100 volts written on there so that should be 100 volts anyway I, they normally run that off the same transformer as the monitor maybe that's coming off this this one in the middle it does support 100 volts on the list there you know I'm not sure how this voltage selector on here currently works so Anyway, that of course was how it was rigged up initially. We didn't have a bulb in the cabinet anyway, so I couldn't see if the marquee light was working. 
And I have got a replacement bulb, so we'll get that fitted. But for now, what we need to do is we need to figure out what's going on with the power. And first of all, by the way, I, I did check all the obvious fuses. There's a couple of fuses here um, on that distribution area. And there's a main fuse on the back here, and all those fuses were good. Inside the power supply itself, hop in there, you can see there's four visible uh, fuses. So I tested each one of those, and lo and behold, this one at the top, um, this one here, is blown. So, and it was quite actually obviously blown as well. Let me just get it out. Okay, and there's the fuse there. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's absolutely busted up inside. But of course, you know, you test it on a multimeter anyway, because even if they look good, they could all also have a, you know, split at the end, and you can't really see that. But this is obviously bent in there, you can see that. And so, yeah, no good. So we just need to change that fuse, and I sus strongly suspect that that fuse blew because of this end connector, because we were moving this around and readjusting it when I was testing it outside of the cabinet. And, you know, that 12 volts could have just bent across to the pin next to it, shorted out. Who knows? So let's go ahead and take out what we uh, don't want here which is this old connector and let's rewire up this into jammer and so to do that we need a jammer harness so let's take a look at that now right so here we have the harness and i made a little bit of a mistake here because i ended up ordering two cocktail suitable jammer harnesses and the only reason why well, that's a bit of a mistake is because that the wiring lengths aren't very long so you can see here this is the player one controls for example and it's not very long if this was in a cocktail machine that would work out really well but it's not we're in a main cabinet so and i think i can get around that because what i'll do is i'll use the original um, set of wiring length for the controls and then we'll uh, we'll hook up to that so we'll keep we'll keep this hooked up to the the main uh, set of controllers which would be in the cabinet and at the other end we'll cut that off the end here and then we can join that up uh, with the uh, controller uh, on the end of the jammer harness here now that will be a combination of player one and the player two and of course this is a full this is a full set you know up down left right both sides and three buttons on both sides now of course we don't have that for hyper olympic so i'm going to have to try and work out which one hyper olympic actually uses when it transfers itself from here through to the converter which then goes uh, from jammer to the konami um, classic standard through to the pcb so so anyway guys this is what this is what we're going to do so this is the main thing this is the controls yep we'll hook that up to the controls so that's all fine what else we got going on here um, in fact there's some 12 volt lighting and also the speakers so we'll connect up the speakers as well um, in fact there's multiple 12 volt lighting here there's the coin door so we'll do all the coin door and the coin door lights after um, there's a credit switch and a test switch which is all pre-wired in so we could also hook that up that goes through to the coin counter and this is another set of uh, 12 volt uh, for lights. This, this, this whole harness is actually pretty good in terms of being you know, totally complete. In some ways I sort of quite like it when they're not all tied up so that I can follow wires back correctly and then group things how I'd like to group them. But regardless, it's all done pretty nicely. We've got the main power harness coming through here and then that also splits off to the RGB sink and earth for the monitor we have this plug on the end which we will need to cut off because that won't be suitable for plugging and connecting through to this one which is already nicely plugged in with a, uh, a molex connector so we'll cut the end of that off and we shall connect it up to this end and we'll also because i don't have um, suitable molex uh, plugs to fit into this so we will have to cut these off as well and then wire those directly into the replacement uh, power wires that are coming from the existing 
power supply. And that's it really guys, uh, it's really just a, a like for like, power, speakers and the main monitor cables and then you know we can do the coin door and stuff after once we get the initial stuff going but once we've done this first bit of wiring we should be able to rig it up, turn it on and we should see some action. Alright and another little update here, so got the main wiring done and uh, individually shrink wrapped all the the power cables and got them cable tied up so they're all good the same with the monitor cables of course they're all individually shrink wrapped underneath the big white one which I've put over the top there and we have run a 12 volt line off to the front of the cab because there was no lights so we need 12 volts for the front coin door lights the speakers were joined together so that's all done we had the additional earthing cables that ran up to the top of the speakers they weren't connected previously so I've connected those back up to earth and that's really all guys and we've got a couple of spare cable not spare but we've got test and and uh, the second credit uh, which I haven't hooked up yet but I may hook that up to that little uh, switch that I got originally with the kit I'll have to get some extension cables to do that so what's left? Well I need to get the controls now so I need to work out which of these wires for the control, existing control harness connect to which player 1 and player 2 buttons or stick functions because of course because this is conversion through from the Konami to Jammer uh, it may not be a one to one like you know button one to button one on the on the Jammer harness I, I think it's actually sort of mixed up a bit so to do that to help us out what we'll do is we'll stick the PCB in the Astro City right so we have the board set up here hyperolympic board set up through the converter into the Jammer harness and we can see it's now running obviously to the side <laughs> on the vertical cab here but it is all running sweet now what we'll do is I believe the player button should be the same so we'll at least be able to, to start that um, let's just do well let's do a two player game and see if we can work out all these controls so changing the name here what I'm going to do is left, okay, so left is right, <laughs> okay, and right is probably button one or the button on the left by the looks of things. Up on here, it's going up on the joystick, up is going back the other way, so that. So that would be the left hand button wouldn't it? That would be button 1, player 1 would be up. Button I think 3 across is left and the middle button select is right. Yeah, so that's it. So that's player 1 controls. Player 2, let's see if it's the same thing. Left no, right, no, up, no, oh, okay, so up was, up was button, uh, in the middle button, so now I've got to find the other ones, <laughs> let's see, not left, not right, okay, so, interestingly, unless it's one of the player one buttons, let's try this, one, two, three, no. Right. So hang on. Oh, that's player one still, so isn't it? Yeah, we're not moving player two at all yet. I had to think about it and I thought that jammer board, the connector, the Konami one, I remember reading that, you know, not all the classic jammer games are the same and not necessarily all of them will work as expected now there is a, a large compatibility list for this now i got this off um uh, game dude which is one of the um 
uh, Aussie Arcade sponsors, great bloke, and uh, good to get parts from and stuff. And, and on his website, in his defence, he actually, he just, he doesn't actually list the full list, he just says, you know, get in touch if you're unsure if it will support your game or not. And I actually found this exact same board in another supplier, um, which had the full list, and they actually listed track and field on there. So I thought, well, this, you know, should, should be compatible. Now, having a look further, um, I found a dedicated board for track and field that another guy makes, which looks very, again, very similar. Again, this is just a, you know, the f a fingerboard here, which is just, you know, routed through to the correct pinouts. That's all it is, really. But, um, yeah, someone else had created one, and his ordering process, unfortunately, you have to sort of... Um, yeah, wait in line really, and it's sort of a hobby business I think for him, so you could wait you know, up to sort of four to eight weeks for a part to come through. So his board wouldn't be suitable, and his one actually looked the best because it had a set of jumpers on there that I think you can select for, um, uh, for track and field specifically. So that got me thinking, well I thought, well okay, clearly this doesn't map up properly to the way the track and field is expecting on the Konami harness for that. So what I did is I got a multimeter and I went through and figured out exactly how this thing is wired up and then compared that against the Konami pinouts to determine, you know, what, what am I missing, what's currently connected here and what's not. So you'll see this diagram that I created and it was pretty interesting. So I could see all the player one uh, buttons being mapped up correctly as we did in the in the video when we we put in the Astro City cab but interestingly there was um the player 2 run button um was actually player 1 button 1 it should have been on the Astro cab but of course I pressed that and nothing was happening run 1 on player two is not connected at all. There's no connection. So there's some there's some small holes on here for every single connection, um, except for a couple which aren't supported by the jammer standard anyway. And what I can do is I can actually just get a you know a piece of wire and um, and just route it across you know jumper wire to basically connect that circuit. So that'll give me the button one um, for player two and then the only other thing that i found was a problem and i did test this is that if you try and do a four player start that's currently rigged up to the same button as um as a three player uh three player start so yeah you can't actually start a four player game either so i'm going to have to rig up a separate uh, wire for that and i'll just hook it up to um, the second player down button just for the sake that it's available and it's on the same side of the board so it'd be easy for me to jump that across so so yeah guys a couple of little hacks I need to do to this two jumper cables and that will give me the right um, that will give me all the right pinouts and then we should be ready to then hook it up to the other so that's the <laughs> first mission that I've been doing is sorting that out but at least I've got to the bottom of that but I have another big problem to share with you. Black screen, no picture, and haven't seen a picture since. So, but there's no, yeah, there's no uh, no net glow there. So, it, it, it seems to me that the, the tube is stuffed. Um, and it's a hard thing to sort of, you know, get down to that because it is so rare. So then I thought about this evil thought, guys, evil thought because in the corner of my study is a spare LCD monitor. <laughs> Shock horror. No! <laughs> Don't put an LCD in there. Don't do it, man. <sighs> desperate times, desperate measures.
And guys, here we go. We have the horrible LCD. Oh no, horrible LCD in the machine. But at least I've got a picture. So I'm just going to figure out what's going wrong with that tube. But at the moment, at least I can use this LCD till we get that monitor tube fixed. And look, this doesn't look too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, get this on the tripod and have a go at Hyper Olympic. Yep. Right, let's go. Put my name in. And I've got to see if I can beat Mitch's score, my son. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Look at him, he's 990 up there. And I haven't been doing very well on this running event. This is what it's all about, guys. Button mashing. He'll catch up, you watch. No way he's dead. Look at that, 10.05. Not enough. In fact, my son's got both. He's got MIT there as well, with Mitchell and, uh, and his main initials at the top. And yeah, look at this. He's uh, also here on the long jump. <laughs> He's hit the top record already. Okay. Oh, it's might have, I should qualify. At least get 6.50. Yeah, 6.70. Wasn't great. I jumped a little bit early let's try that again see how it comes up the one up just on the side there if you saw that quickly on this side of the machine ah early again that's going to be rubbish they're not even going to make the qualifier i don't think on that one okay well at least i've i've qualified so <laughs> third try try and get a winner here Ah, oh, again too early. And maybe a little bit too high, 52 degrees. You really need to get it on the 45. And uh, not too bad, but yeah. It's way off the mark here. If I was right on the line, always difficult to judge. Okay, the javelin throw. And no one's got the high score here yet, so the world record. Oh, way too late. <laughs> way too late and that really slowed up too so let's try that again oh wow that was right on again no it wouldn't have been enough enough angle geez okay it's the last one guys <laughs> let me see if i can get this well we're not over the foul line, so... Oh, look at that. <laughs> 71. <laughs> Needed 70. Uh, just made it. Okay, we are on the hurdles. And uh, a bit of a technique here. I, I tend to just use the, the one button because both run buttons actually do the same thing. It's actually supposed to be for left and right-handed players. So you don't actually need to be sort of doing a, a drum roll on both but um, clearly you could probably get the maximum speed if you did if you do do the drum roll but you can just use one jump button if you want to gosh have to be faster than that though to get up onto the world records now with the hammer it's a bit of a trick so that, what I need to do is you just start this thing rolling and this yellow bar once it gets to about midway of the last one or just past that's when you want to hit it yeah that was nearly to the end and not too bad and you can see look at that guys i do have the uh, at least the second world record <laughs> not the first world record my son is still beating me okay let's see if i can uh, crack that to crack that i've really got to get it right to the end of that last bar like that but i'm gonna go out oh look at that Oh, that would have been sensational if it was just a little bit earlier in that last segment. Yeah, don't watch the guy because you just can't do it from him. But you can on that bottom one. Oh, that's not too bad, but a bit shallow. Damn, if I held that down a little bit longer, I would have got that. Now, the last event, guys, I'm just really hopeless at this high jump. 
and it was always the same back in the day because it's one of those events you don't really get to you know do much unless you you know make it to the bottom so yes yeah, a bit of a technique you've got to hit the jump button to stop him he flies up then you've got to change the angle um, I've changed the angle coming across then he lifts up his legs and then you got to roll it across this is actually the best I've ever done <laughs> now I've done a little bit better maybe no, actually I, I, I have qualified on this before but I normally stuff it up ah, like that I wasn't wasn't quite close enough so yeah it's a bit of a, a, bit of a tough event this one Yes. Oh, there we go. We're on third at third of the world. My son again is ahead of me. <laughs> I have to. Uh, I have to beat that. But can I do it? Oh, too late. Way too late. Okay, try again. No, I'm way too. I'm way too. I need to be closer but that's it you only get the one shot and then you're done but guys oh, so glad I've got this working <laughs> let's get this uh, tripod moved a little bit and let's finish up this video but what what happened to just like you know these people that pick up games and they just swap over it you know a, a, a fuse and then it starts working and they're all happily merrily playing not this guy Jeez, this had that scrolling screen. I thought, oh, you know, is it going to be just the vertical hold? Not going to be that easy. But surely just a chassis fix. No, the PCB is stuffed. The chassis was also stuffed. Then there's now something wrong with the tube. The wiring was all stuffed. It had to be changed. And then, uh, you know, as part of my champ plan to take it to jammer anyway, we swapped all the wiring over. Then, of course, couldn't use the tube, got the LCD in. <laughs> what has happened here this should be should be easy so just be careful guys with this hobby sometimes you pick up things and you think it's going to be relatively easy to fix not always the case anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i know it was a long one as i said but uh, if you do like it please hit the like button subscribe tell your friends all that good stuff and uh, really looking forward to seeing you in the next video and until then ciao for now